dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Today marked the Perry County Farmers Market's first gathering of 2022, but today's event was more than just a day to pick up fresh vegetables and baked goods. WYMT's Alyssa Williams spoke to those involved with the Farmers Market to learn more about today's event and their community impact. In this day and age, it's no secret that healthier foods are often more expensive than unhealthy options. If you go grocery shopping, um, you've seen prices and we, everybody understands that inflation is really starting to have an effect on people's ability to access food. I mean, it's always been a problem, but it's the problem is escalating. 17% of Kentuckians are food insecure, and in order to combat that, the Perry County Farmers Market offers various benefits for community members to afford more produce, like the Double Dollars program. When you come and you use your SNAP card, we actually double. So for example, let's say you wanna spend $12 on fruits and vegetables, you get 24. So um, it really makes that money stretch, and it's not, it's not something that you're gonna find in a grocery store. On Saturday, the market partnered with Save the Children to host a Sweet Pea Valentine's Day market, not only celebrating the mountain tradition of planting peas on Valentine's Day, but to help inspire children and their families to think about food in sustainable ways. So we're trying to make parents and just the public aware of planting gardens. I mean, you know, back in the old days, people planting gardens, that's what you did. Using their resources to help bridge the gap of food insecurity in Perry County. In Hazard, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. The market's manager, Kirsten Webb, says you can stay up to date with their schedule by visiting the Perry County Farmers Market Facebook page. Those who are out shopping at Food City, IGA, and several other select grocery chain locations were given the opportunity to give back. The annual Shop and Share statewide fundraising event took place today. This fundraiser encourages shoppers to purchase food, cleaning, or personal care items that benefit their local domestic violence shelters. This year, the LKLP Safe House set up inside the Hazard Food City. The program's director of domestic violence services, Aline Rose, says this event not only benefits the Safe House, but also sends a comforting message to domestic violence survivors. It's something that shows to the survivors of domestic violence that the community supports you, that the community can come together and help you, even in such worrying times, troubled times as COVID, there are still people who are willing to go that extra mile to support a survivor of domestic violence. If you miss the shop and share opportunity, Rose says you can still donate items to the Safe House. We'll have that. We'll have the LKLP Safe House's information on our website at WYMT.com. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman was also involved with the statewide event today in Lexington. Shop and Share has raised over $5 million since First Lady Brittany Bashir started the program in 2009. Coleman spent part of her morning with shoppers at Kroger on Leastown Road in Lexington. I'm really excited to be able to walk through and to pick out a few things that are on this list uh, that will just drop off with the volunteers afterwards. Shop and Share officials said the supplies collected in one event typically last and feed families for around one year. This being Super Bowl weekend, grocery stores were particularly busy. Leslie County High School organization held a canned food drive today. The event was held by, held by Operation Hope at the Hyden City Park. City Park. People in the community were given a chance to donate non-perishable foods to help refill the organization's hope boxes. Those boxes will go towards helping Operation Hope in their upcoming state competition. The competition is one aspect of our project, but we really care about just helping out our community. So we want to ensure that people have available resources, they have access to food and whatever else they may need. So we just really enjoy giving back to our community. Buckle says they held a raffle during the event. Every 10 cans of food donated gave someone a chance to win a UK basketball tickets, gift cards, and baked goods. Well, it's definitely a chill in the air this evening as we were in those upper 60s yesterday, but not today as that cold front has definitely brought some cooler air into the area. Let's take a look at that camera over at the London Corbin Airport, barely above freezing tonight, sitting at 33 degrees under that mostly cloudy sky. All of us in those middle to lower 30s, 33 for Jackson, 37 over in Pikeville, 34 for Williamsburg, and we are at freezing over in Somerset at 32 degrees. Here is a look at pinpoint Doppler. Now this is showing a few rain or snow showers out there, but I'm just not buying that just yet. 
because take a look at these dew points. The air is very dry right now. Those dew points in the upper teens to lower 20. So just not really looking at that precipitation hitting the ground just yet. However, we could see a few snow flurries out there throughout the rest of tonight. Temperature is falling off into those lower 30s by 9 o'clock. So if you do have any plans to head outdoors, be sure to bundle up because it will be chilly. And I got your full forecast and what you can expect on Super Bowl Sunday coming up just a little bit later. Keaton. Thanks, Cameron. Day two of the Eastern Kentucky Sport Boat and RV Show is underway, and hundreds of guests have come out to join in on the fun. WYMT's Jordan Mullins has more from businesses at the show and how great it is to be back. The Eastern Kentucky Sport Boat and RV Show is an event that has been held for many years. We've been doing this show, gosh, since the early 2000s, 2003, thereabouts. Uh, every year, it's grown every year. Uh, great to be back. Um, being off for the couple years that we had to. And although last year's show was canceled due to the pandemic, folks still made their way back to the Appalachian Wireless Arena this year to check out the show. We've had a great turnout today. I mean, uh, we've had a lot of people coming in, and it's good to see some uh, some old faces that we used to see in the past when we used to do the, we had the boat RV show, you know, a few years ago uh, since COVID's been out. Families and children having a great time, I saw some kids running around and, and they ran into a trailer and said, boy, I, I need a bottle of water. And I said, you know, why is that? And she said, because I've been up and down so many steps already. I've been in and out of about 100 trailers. And local businesses reaching out and meeting new people. It's always exciting to get out and meet new people, uh, meet new customers. Uh, the last few days have been wonderful and we're just really glad to be here. A boost to the economy and some family fun for everyone, back and better than ever. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Jordan said many folks who came out to the show stopped by the WYMT booth and said they were having a blast. Doors will be open from noon to 5 p.m. on Sunday as well. The Kentucky House has passed a bill that raises pay for state police troopers and commercial vehicle enforcement officers. The proposal would increase the starting pay of troopers from the current $40,888 to $55,888. Now heads to the Senate. Legislation passed Friday would provide for a 10% pay increase for those at or above the rank of sergeant and a $15,000 pay increase for state troopers and commercial vehicle enforcement officers were below the rank of sergeant. KSP ranks 74th among law enforcement agencies in Kentucky for starting pay. The Better Business Bureau is asking people to think twice before taking Facebook quizzes. What was the first car you drove? What city were you born in? What was the first concert you ever went to? These questions are circling on Facebook, but Better Business Bureau officials said it's a scam. Sharing this information can give scammers just what they need to hack into your private accounts or steal your information. If you feel you've been a victim of this scam or another one, you can contact the Better Business Bureau or local law enforcement for more information on what you can do. Still to come at 7, the Kentucky community of Kentucky community is rallying around a family that lost their business in a fire. These chilly temperatures stick around through the weekend, and we could also see a few snowflakes as well. Got all those details coming up.